sloppiness about who exactly we're fighting, where this can lead us. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for president of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. We hear language that singles out immigrants and suggests entire religious communities are complicit in violence. Where does this stop? The Orlando killer, one of the San Bernardino killers, the Fort Hood killer, they were all U.S. citizens. Are we going to start treating all Muslim Americans differently? Are we going to start subjecting them to special surveillance? Are we going to start discriminating against them because of their faith? We've heard these suggestions during the course of this campaign. Do Republican officials actually agree with this? Because that's not the America we want. It doesn't reflect our democratic ideals. It won't make us more safe, it will make us less safe. Fueling ISIL's notion that the West hates Muslims. Making young Muslims in this country and around the world feel like no matter what they do, they're going to be under suspicion and under attack. It makes Muslim Americans feel like their government is betraying them. It betrays the very values America stands for. We've gone through moments in our history before when we acted out of fear, and we came to regret it. We've seen our government mistreat our fellow citizens. And it has been a shameful part of our history. This is a country founded on basic freedoms, including freedom of religion. We don't have religious tests here. Our founders, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights are clear about that. And if we ever abandon those values, we would not only make it a lot easier to radicalize people here and around the world, but we would have betrayed the very things we are trying to protect. The pluralism and the openness, our rule of law, our civil liberties, the very things that make this country great, the very things that make us exceptional. And then the terrorists would have won. And we cannot let that happen. I will not let that happen. You know, two weeks ago, I was at the commencement ceremony at the Air Force Academy. And it could not have been more inspiring to see these young people stepping up, dedicated to serve and protect this country. And part of what was inspiring was the incredible diversity of these cadets. We saw cadets who are straight applauding classmates who were openly gay. We saw cadets born here in America applauding classmates who were immigrants and loved this country so much they decided they wanted to be part of our armed forces. We saw cadets and families of all religions applaud cadets who are proud, patriotic Muslim Americans serving their country in uniform, ready to lay their lives on the line to protect you and to protect me. We saw male cadets applauding for female classmates who can now serve in combat positions. 
That's the American military. That's America. One team. One nation. Those are the values that ISIL's trying to destroy. And we shouldn't help them do it. Our diversity and our respect for one another, our drawing of, on the talents of everybody in this country, our making sure that we are treating everybody fairly, that we're not judging people on the basis of what faith they are or, or what race they are or what ethnicity they are or what their sexual orientation is. Except when you're judging against Christianity. That's what makes this country great. That's the spirit we see in Orlando. That's the unity and resolve that will allow us to defeat ISIS. That's what will preserve our values and our ideals that define us as Americans. He said lastly, a long that's time how ago. We're going to defend this nation, and that's how we're going to defend our way of life. Thank you very much. Uh, President Barack Obama uh, talking ostensibly about uh, the fight against uh, ISIS. Uh, but that last uh, five to eight minutes was probably the uh, most angry uh, President Barack Obama that we have seen in some time uh, when he was talking about Donald Trump. He didn't mention his name. Not by name. He said the, the presumptive Republican nominee.